Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to Pimp My Sherman Volume 3, my ongoing M4 Sherman detailing series. And in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at adding weld seams, cast seams and cast textures to our M4A1 Sherman here. So this is a Nasuka M4A1. Uh, this is a late model, or this is marketed as one. So we're going to be adding some interesting details, firstly by adding some weld beads to these applique plates that are on the hull sides and the turret cheek. So this is a, a dry storage Sherman in an attempt to try to, to minimize fire and ammunition cook off, they tried to weld plates to the side of the tanks, didn't really work, but uh, they gave it a go. I've also just added couple of replacement pieces here out of uh, styrene which are just the mounting eyes for the spring set, uh, system for the small um, for the hatches which will be um, another video in the future so I've left this model in sub assemblies and just a little thing I want to show you here is I intend to add a crew to this model in the future so I've just added a mounting platform and I've just sprayed the interior of the whole black so you don't see any bare plastic so now we're going to start adding some weld seams and for this we're going to use the tried and true method of just using stretch sprue. So these are just straight uh, pieces of sprue cut from a frame. This is from a dragon kit. Um, I find that the dragon plastic just um, really stretches nicely when applied uh, under heat. So we're just going to create some moderately thick pieces of um, sections of stretch sprue here. And I'm going to apply a pretty liberal amount of Tamiya Extra Tin, this is the nice smelling citrus version, but any of the extra tins will do here. And I'm just going to lay this onto the slight gap that I have actually that's um, on this applique plate here. And I'm just going to sit that down. And I'm going to trim everything to size. And once it's been allowed to set for a couple of minutes, I'm just going to apply a, a moderate layer or two of extra tin on top of our stretch sprue. And this is going to act to soften our piece of sprue here. And this is going to make it malleable so we can actually start sculpting in the weld seam here. I'm just using a fresh blade on a hobby knife here. I'm just going to start pushing the blade into the softened sprue here. If it's a little bit too much resistance, you can always come back and add another layer of glue just to lighten things up a little bit better. Or to soften things up a little bit better, should I say. Now this can be a little bit messy, you can see I have quite a bit of glue here, but once we add primer over this, you won't see any of that those glue marks. So just being careful um, not to get any fingerprints onto the model. So then we're just going to do exactly the same process here with the well seam for the applique armor on the third cheek. Just slowly cutting in and pushing in that detail to create the, uh, the well furrows. If you don't want to use stretch sprue, you can also use very thin uh, styrene rod. Um, there is cases where I use 0.5 millimeter styrene rod and um, it works just as well, if not a little bit better because it reacts a bit better with the plastic uh, cement. Now just something I want to point out here, so I took a little bit of 0.5 millimeter styrene rod and I, using the actual mold seam on the turret basket halves, I've um, actually added a piece of 0.5 mil rod to trace and run around that. Now a lot of people mistakenly put this as a well seam. However, this is actually a mole seam. So I know most of the time in model making we remove mole seams. In this case we're adding one. 
and this is actually a byproduct of the actual sand molds that these um, M4 turrets were actually molded in. So what I'm going to do, using a very similar technique, I'm going to take our straight, or in this case, our 0.5mm rod. I'm going to soften it with extra tin, and then taking the back of a tweezers, I'm going to push it flat. So I'm not trying to create a weld texture. I'm actually just trying to flatten this down a little bit to create the idea of a weld seam or of a, a mold seam, should I say. I'm also just going to sand it down ever so slightly too, so it doesn't stand too proud. This uh, is a pretty noticeable feature on most M4 Shermans. And just be careful that you don't accidentally make this a weld seam. I've seen it quite a bit online of late, uh, with people adding the correct idea, but just mistaking the, what, what the actual seam is. They're, they're mistaking it for a weld seam rather than a mold seam. Now to the actual cast texture, and for this we're going to the tried and true and the favourite uh, Mr. Surfacer. In this case this is Mr. Surfacer 500, so this is basically a tinned um, putty. And I'm just going to take some old brushes here and I'm going to start stippling. So this is an M4A1, so that means we have a cast transmission cover that I'm adding our cast texture here, as well as a cast turret and upper hull. So the trick I find here is to work in sections, build up the layer. So I'll put down a, a layer of Mr. Surfacer, apply it, and then when it's still wet and before it sets, I'll start stippling. Trick here is just to work in small sections and blend as you go. Mr. Surfacer is pretty fast setting putty, so you don't want to cover the entire model and lose control of it. So the best thing to do is just even on this um, transmission housing here, I did about three or four passes working in small sections and then blending together. And then if I feel that it's a little bit too subtle, I can add another layer on top of it once it's dried. It's pretty simple. Um, there's not really much to it. It's actually something I really enjoy doing on Sherman's is adding the cast texture. It's just something um, I find this really uh, satisfying for some weird re reason. So there's other cast aspects of Sherman as well. And in this case, we have the Commander's Cupola and the uh, fuel caps and co-driver and driver hatches. And we're going to use a slightly different technique to impart a cast texture onto these. So we're going to use some Tamiya Extra Tin and I'm going to use an old brush that I don't mind sacrificing because this is going to destroy this brush. So use a brush that you don't really mind um, sacrificing to the glue gods. And I'm just going to paint on a little bit of Extra Tin. Uh, in this case, we're just going to start with the fuel caps. Paint it on, being a bit careful just to keep it on the areas that we want and then just stipple. And this imparts a very quick and pretty nice cast texture onto these parts pretty quickly. Again, just going to add a bit of a cast texture on these uh, bulges here. So just paint on and then I just stipple. I don't want to go too crazy, I just want to add a slight notion of cast texture. On the Commander's Cupola, exactly the same. Now there is sometimes cast numbering molded onto these pieces. So what I tend to do there is I won't bring the glue over those parts, I'll kind of paint around those parts and because if I hit that with the glue and stipple, I'll actually erase that pretty subtle detail. So you do have that control because you're applying with a paintbrush. So if there's like anything like a cast numbering that you don't want to obliterate, just uh, paint around it. Don't bring the texture too close to it.
I'm also going to apply these to the gousers or the fence on the back of the engine deck. This is a simple little detail sometimes overlooked and these are also cast. So another detail I added, and this is from Tiger Model Designs, which is sadly uh, going out of uh, production soon. I, I believe the owner is retiring, so many uh, happy returns to him and uh, hope he enjoys his retirement. But if you can get your hands on these before his stocks go, I ser seriously recommend picking up some of their stuff. And these are their US Armour tie-down loops, which are resin pieces. And I just added these to the rear of my turret bustle. So you can see I've already added the cast texture here. I didn't have, there's no point showing you the whole thing. It's the same letters. There's a few layers. And I applied the tie down loops after I tie, um, applied the, the cast texture here. I've also put in the drainage holes in the back of the radio pot there. Uh, you can see the, the holes drilled into the back of the ventilator. So another detail that I'm not really the, the best on is adding well seams with putty. So this is just um, some brown stuff, which is another version of neotite, like kind of green stuff. It's a two pyrotex boxy. And I just used a um, piece of styrene sheet just to roll out a, like a worm or a sausage. And then I just apply this here and I'm just going to sculpt in with a, a fine hobby blade that's dipped in water so it won't stick into the putty. And I'm just going to sculpt in a little bit of a well seam. Now, I am not the best at this type of detail, so it, in my mind, this is a little bit overscaled. Um, however, it's still nice that I it's there. Um, though I would recommend that you would probably, if you have more experience with putty, can do this a little bit cleaner. Um, I just thought I'd just show it for, for um, completeness sake. So now adding some cast numbering or foundry markings. And this is again from Archer, which is also going out of business, which is also quite sad. Again, its uh, owner is retiring from the business. So again, many happy returns to them. Um, and these are 3D printed decals. Now, if you can get your hands on these, I recommend if you're a Sherman guy or an Allied Armour guy, try to get your hands on these quick before they all go. I have a few of them in the stash, so hopefully it'll keep me going for a while. So I'm going to take here our... Oh, I can't think of the foundry shield now. So this is basically was found on the um, hulls of most M4A ones after I think it's late forty two, early forty three, and um, so I'm just going to apply this. And just taking a little bit of Microsol, I just apply a small bit to the hull, and then um, paint the the part with it. Now these decals are fragile. So be a little bit careful adding them. I'm just adding here the uh, cast uh, foundry markings on the transmission cover. But once you apply them, be very mindful how you handle the model because you can wipe these away before you seal the model with varnish or uh, with primer, should I say. So just be a little bit careful handling your model because you can not uh, wipe these away quite easily. But the um, ex extra detail they add is absolutely phenomenal. And um, I really do hope in the case of both companies, both Tiger Model Design and Archer, that someone else comes in and buys their, their stock and their molds because um, they're both fantastic companies. I've done a very simplified cast numbering here because there's going to be another part that's going to obscure most of this numbering and I'm not going to give it away. That's going to be a conversion for another video. So there we have our cast numbering and our foundry marking on the glazes. Now Sherman's are full of cast markings like here on top of the turret and as well on the rear of the turret. So these are pretty simple little details, but they add a lot to your, your, your Sherman builds and they're pretty easy to do. Even if you don't have access to those decals, by just adding the cast and well seams, 
and mold seams to the turret back you can add a lot of character to your models and i really hope guys you found this interesting um i know my 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 sherman detailing series is a little bit kind of niche in off our guns taste but i do quite enjoy showing you kind of break down detailed steps of what i do in some of my builds so I, I have some more painting videos coming up in the very very uh, near future i'm actually just doing the voiceovers for them at the moment as well so guys thank you so much for watching if you have any questions um please uh ask them in the comments below i have been shane stay safe out there guys and i'll catch you next time bye bye